Hello students, how are you all? I hope you keeping well and doing well. So, I am Priyanka Singh and I am your science teacher. From today, I am starting chapter number 12. And from this chapter, unit 4 is starting. Moving things, people and ideas. And the name of this chapter is motion and time. So, let's start. Introduction. There are various kinds of things in the environment. Some of them are stationary, whereas many of them move from one place to another. Moving a car, rolling a ball, a walking boy are some examples of the moving objects. Some of the objects show very slow movement, whereas many of them move fast. Trees, building, Electrical poles, etc. are not in motion. They are said to be at rest. So, we see there are two types of object. These are the objects which do not change their position with time. The objects which do not change their position with time are said to be at rest. The objects which change their position with time time. The objects which change their position with time are said to be in motion. The same object may be at rest at one moment and in motion at some other. The states of rest and motion are relative. Nothing is at absolute rest or in absolute motion in the universe. Any object said to be in the state of rest or motion is relative to a fixed point. Such a fixed point is chosen arbitrarily. Let us imagine ourselves to be sitting inside a compartment of a running train. Take a situation when everybody in the compartment is sitting at rest. Then each passenger is at rest relative to their compartment as well as with respect to other passengers. But if we consider any point outside the compartment example platform as a reference point then the compartment as well as passengers in it are in motion. This example shows that the same object may be at rest with respect to one reference point and in motion with respect to another at the same time. So we can say that the motion is actually a relative motion and the state of rest and motion are relative. Types of motion. In your previous class, you have read about the types of motion. Just to recall them, various types of motion we generally observe are illustrated on the next page. So, these are the various motions. Okay. So, see this pictures and observe them. Translatory motion, linear motion, curvilinear motion, random motion, rotary motion, rolling motion, periodic motion, oscillatory motion, vibratory motion. We all realize the importance of time. You always try to reach your school in time. If you are late, you may be punished. If you get late to railway station, you may miss your train. Thus, there are many instances which tells us the importance of time. For example, the unit of time used by them was the time interval between sunrise or sunset or to the next sunrise. One full moon to another full moon. From one season to another etc. These time intervals however could not be used as a standard unit of time because of the following reasons. These time intervals are so long. These time intervals change from place to place and from time to time. Based on the periodic nature of these phenomena, ancient people made devices such as sundial, hourglass or sand clock water clock, etc. for measuring time. Sundial, it measures time by position of the sun. It has a stick out in the center of a circular disk. 
the position and length of the shadow of the stick on the dial gives an indication of time. The limitation of this instrument is that it cannot function during cloudy weather and at night. Water clock. In a water clock, water is allowed to flow out from a hole made at the bottom of a bowl shaped container into another bowl kept below. The emptying of the water filled bowl to different level corresponds scientific time periods. Sand clock. The sand clock or our glass consists of two bulb shaped containers made of glass and connected through a narrow glass tube. Sand is filled in one of the containers. The clock is kept on a plain surface with a filled container at the top. When all the sand trickles down to the lower container, a definite time period, usually an hour, is over. Units of time. The standard unit of time is second. The unit second is denoted by the letter S. Bigger unit of time are minute, that is M I N, R, H, D, D, year, Y, etc. One minute is equals to 60 seconds, or we can say one minute is equals to 60 seconds. We can use abbreviation of minute as M I N and seconds as S E C. 1 hour is equals to 60 minute or 1 H that is R is equals to 60 M I N that is minute. 1 day is equals to 24 hour or 1 D is equals to 24 H. D denotes day and H denotes R. 1 year is equals to 365 days or we can say 1 by Y denotes year or it is equals to 365D. D is days. The time taken by the earth to complete one's rotation about its axis is called a day. The time taken by the earth to complete one revolution around the sun is called a year. Measurement of time. We need to measure intervals of time which are much shorter than a day. Clock and watches are rather complex, but all of them use the principle of periodic motion for measuring time. We have learnt in previous class that a motion which repeats itself at regular interval of time is called periodic motion. One of the most common devices which shows periodic motion is a simple pendulum. Simple pendulum. A simple pendulum is a device that completes each to and for motion in exactly the same time. It was discovered by the great Italian scientist Galileo Galilei. A simple pendulum consists of a heavy object like a stone or a metal ball tied to an end of a very light unstretchable string. The heavy object hangs freely from the string. The heavy object is called the bob of the pendulum. The normal or the resting position of the bob called its mean position is displayed from its mean position taken to a side and released. The bob sets into a to and fro motion about its mean position. This to and fro motion of the bob about its position is called oscillatory motion. If initially the bob is displayed from its mean position say O to point A and released it comes back to its mean position does not stop and continues to move forward to point B from there again comes back towards the mean position the distance between points B and O is equal to the distance between point A and O. The motion of the bob starting from point O to point A, then A to B via O. And finally back to O from B is counted as one oscillation. An extra mile. To count one oscillation from an extreme point, the bob must travel the whole path from one extreme to the other. Twice. We are the mean position and reach back the starting point. 
point A and B are called the extreme positions beyond which the bob does not move. The counting of one oscillation can be started from any of the extreme points, taking care that the oscillation is complete. When the bob comes back to the starting point, the time taken by the bob to complete one oscillation is known as the time period of the pendulum. Time period is expressed in seconds. So, children, this is the example. See these examples and try to understand them and also practice them in your copies. Example 1, 2 and 3. Now, speed and average speed. Objects may travel fast or slow. The most convenient way to find out which of the two or more objects is moving faster is to compare the distances moved by them in a unit time. Speed of a moving object is the distance traveled by it in unit time. I, V, know that the distance covered by an object and the time taken by it to cover that particular distance, we can calculate the speed of that object by using the formula. That is, speed is equal to distance travel by time taken. Suppose a car travels a distance of 360 km in 4 hours, then its speed will be speed is equal to distance traveled divided by time taken. That is, 360 divided by 40 is equal to 90 km per hour. Thus, the speed of this car is 90 km per hour. Units of speed. As per definition, we can write unit of speed is equal to unit of distance divided by unit of time. The SI unit of distance is meter that is m and that of time is second that is s. Therefore, SI unit of speed is equal to meter divided by seconds. It's equals to meter per second. The unit meter per second can be written as meter per second or meter raised to the power s1. Since speed varies from very slow to very fast, the SI unit meter per second is not suitable to express all the speed. Therefore, speed can be expressed in many different units as described below. So, students are you able to see the chart? This chart is showing the unit of time and unit of speed. Unit of distance, unit of time, unit of speed in words or in notation. First one is centimeter, unit of time second, unit of speed in words centimeter per second in notation that is cm oblique s or we can also write it as centimeter per second. Second, meter, unit of time, minute, unit of speed in words, meter per minute. In notation, it is meter per minute, that is m oblique m i n. Third one is kilometer, r, kilometer per r, k m oblique h. Generally, the vehicles like cars, buses, trucks, trains, aeroplanes, etc. travel longer distances. Also, the time taken by each one of them is of longer duration. Hence, it is inconvenient to express the distance in meters and time in seconds. Therefore, to express the speed of vehicles and some other objects, a bigger unit that is kilometer per hour is used. The speed of slow moving bodies are commonly expressed in the units of centimeter per second that is cm oblique s or meter per minute that is m oblique m i n average speed. When we say that a car is moving with a speed of 60 km per hour we usually consider only the total distance covered by it in one hour. We do not bother whether the car has been moving with a constant speed or not. During that hour, the speed calculated here is actually the average speed of the car. So, average speed is calculated by dividing total distance traveled by an object by the total time taken to travel this distance. Thus, in this book, we shall use the term speed for average speed.
द एवरेज स्पीड ऑफ अ मूविंग व्हीकल मे बी डिफरेंट फॉर डिफरेंट इंटरवल्स ऑफ टाइम इन जर्नल ऑल मेजर्ड स्पीड आर एवरेज स्पीड द वेरियस फॉर्म्स ऑफ द रिलेशनशिप स्पीड इज इक्वल्स टू डिस्टेंस ट्रेवल डिवाइडेड बाई टाइम टेकन और v is equals to s divided by t distance travel speed into time taken or s is equals to v into t time taken distance travel divided by speed or t is equals to s divided by v so students please go through these examples and try to understand or also do them in your copy example 1 example 2 an example 3 speedometer and odometer if we look at the dashboard of the car we find many instruments on it speedometer is an instrument on a vehicle dashboard which indicate the speed of the vehicle at that instant of time in kilometers per hour odometer is an instrument which shows the distance travel by vehicle in kilometers The meters fitted on the top of handles of scooter and motorcycles are in belt speedometer and odometer as shown in the picture. So students there is another example which is given. So go through it and also try to solve it. Uniform and non-uniform motion. If a moving body covers equal distance and equal intervals of time, it is said to be in uniform motion. On the other hand, if a moving body covers unequal distances in equal intervals of time or equal distances in unequal intervals of time, it is said to be in non-uniform motion. Therefore, the speed of the body in non-uniform motion keeps on changing, whereas it does not change or remain constant in uniform motion. graphical presentation of speed we can also present a given information in the pictorial form the data presented in the form of picture is called a pictograph the presentation of an information or data in the form of a graph is called graphical presentation graph graphs are of various type these are bar graphs graphs shown in the form of bars pie chart and line graph these are the types of graph okay the first one is bar graph the second one is line graph and the third one is pie graph a graph is drawn on a graph paper or a graph sheet let us learn about elements of graph a graph paper is divided into equal parts by two perpendicular lines meeting at a common point o which is known as the origin of the graph the perpendicular line are known as the axis of the graph as shown in the figure the horizontal line x o x is known as the x axis and the vertical line y o y is known as the y axis of the graph the values of two given quantities presented in a tabular form comprises of data an appropriate scale is chosen to represent the values of the two given quantities to draw a graph following three steps are followed drawing axis choosing an appropriate scale presentation of data on the two axes some other distance time graphs when the speed of an object is not uniform during the course of its motion the distance time graph are different from that shown below so these are the different types of graph The first one is the distance time graph for a body at rest is a straight line parallel to the time axis and the next one is the distance time graph for a body moving with an increasing non uniform speed is a rising curve and the third one is the distance time graph for a body moving with a decreasing non uniform speed is a curve reaching limiting values of distance and the fourth one is the distance time graph for a body moving with a decreasing non uniform speed is a curve reaching limiting values of distance so students there is a example so go through it and try to solve it it's time for readers digest the standard unit of time is second One of the most common devices which shows periodic motion is a simple pendulum. Graphs are of 
various types bar graph pie chart and line graph so students it's time to take your leave we'll meet in the next class bye